G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me. I'm down here in the quail pen again today. I did do a little bit of the rounds. You'll probably hear the ducks and the chickens in the background. I filled up their water containers. They were out of feed, so I filled up their feed containers and just did a bit of general looking around. Now I've made it to the quail pen. All this doesn't take me too long, by the way, in the mornings. It's generally half an hour of walking around and doing a few things and then I'm out of here, collect the eggs. And speaking of eggs, there was five quail eggs here this morning in down the back of the pen there, which is surprising because we're coming into winter and the days are shorter. Quail lay, uh, well, they don't necessarily go off the lay because it gets colder, they go off the lay because the days get shorter. And this is good for quail because it gives them it's such a little bird and they lay almost like a chicken, an egg every day. It takes a lot out of them, so they tend to go and have a good rest over the winter break. The different types or different breeds of quail. My quail tend to be a lot of different breeds, so when I'm showing you the specific breeds or different breeds of quail, there's probably several others that I'm going to miss, and feel free to mention them down below. Some of mine will be mixed up slightly, but I'll just do my best to show you as close as I can to the purebred varieties that you can get. All right, let me go around the pen and see how many examples or different breeds of quail I can find that I'm actually keeping. Okay, let's start with the common browns. So the common brown quail, they've got the stripe, typically the stripe on the heads. This is a male, and you can see the collar. See the, the uh, brown collar there around it? And this is the female, still has the stripes and the common brown brownness. They're quite the same, except she's got some spots on her breast. If they flap, you just leave them going. They, they tuck themselves out. They get away on you. She's got spots on the chest. See that? So that's the female and that's the male. So you can tell them apart just by looking at them. These are the common brown. They're the, the original of the species. Okay, these two look very similar. You could probably be forgiven for calling them both Tibetans. This one on the right here is probably more Tibetan. It's darker. It's got a smoky type plumage. Um, whereas the one on the left here is probably more a cinnamon, a red golden cinnamon, because it's, I don't know if you can see as much, but it's more of a reddish type color. See the difference there? This one here has got a little bit of white in it. But yeah, one on the, this side here I would say is a cinnamon and this one a more Tibetan. This one here is a tuxedo. You see you've got the white at the front and then like a tux, the white at the front and then you've got the darker colors at the back and, and the sides. See if I can make it pronounce it a little bit more. But yeah, it looks like it's wearing a tux. Quite a, a nice, nifty, attractive looking Courtenix quail. Here's a snowy or an Italian type breed. It's a light brown sort of spot. Oops spots all over it, close to a fawn type breed, but yeah, light brown, white through it, and spotty or snowy. Very close to that last one, the Italian, is this silver, where it almost looks like the common brown, but they're, they're more pronounced, some of the silvers are a lot more pronounced than this one, but this one's close to the silver. It's just a lighter brown of the Courtenix, and it's sort of like a mix between the Italian or the snowy and the 
the common brown, but it's just a silver, more of a silver coat. This one here is a fawn. This is a male. You can see a beautiful dark collar there. But you've got the fawny colour, the brown. Same on the on the wings. This one's quite feisty. Very handsome looking male. And finally we have the A&M. This is a male and this one is almost completely pure white. White everywhere. There's um, well, there's not even any white patch on the back of his head. Most A&Ms have a signature little, uh, or not white patch, so they have a signature little brown spot on the top of the head. But uh, this fella is a pure white all over. Not a little bit of brown anywhere on him. So there you go. The Texas A&M. Beautiful bird and uh, the best eating too. Well I hope you enjoyed that video on the different breeds of Courtenix quail. I was glad that I had quite a few here to be able to show you the different types. Sure they weren't all pure breads but I think you got the idea of the different types that you can get. The main thing is that they're pretty much all the same, except for the A&M, which is slightly different in, in the meat department, a little bit of a lighter flesh. But apart from that, no matter what colour they are, besides looking at them and seeing all the different types, there's generally not much difference at all between the way they act or operate. Mine interbreed because I keep them all together. That's just the way I do it, and uh, that's why I tend to get some different types of varieties in a mixture. Go to the website selfsufficientme.com, you'll see that I've written about quail, go to the top menu, poultry section, under that there's a quail section, you'll see I've written several articles or a lot more than that on quail and keeping quail, even like a startup guide for beginners, so have a look there. Don't forget to subscribe and give a thumbs up. Thanks a lot for watching, bye for now.